If you're considering oncology pharmacy, you need to know this. 60% of oncology pharmacists are burned out with the vast majority of them saying it's because of emotional exhaustion, just feeling like they got nothing left in the tank for their patients. Well, is that because of the career or the field or is it because of the work environment? Well, either way, you want to know if oncology is right for you. And in this video, we'll be getting into all of the nitty gritty details, <laughs> the nitty gritty details about oncology pharmacy, the salary, the job satisfaction, the job market demand, and the flexibility of being an oncology pharmacist. If you've never been here before, hi, I'm Alex. I talk about all things pharmacy careers. And in this video series, we talk about individual career paths for pharmacists and diving into the details that you probably haven't heard before. So with that out of the way, let's get started. So what is oncology pharmacy? Well, let's break it down. Oncology is broken down into a word of onco, which means like bulk or tumor, mass, and then ology, which is of course the study of. Cancer has a unfortunately rich and devastating effect on the human race. One of the first documented sources of oncology was actually 3000 BC, where they described a mass as being in curable. We have found fossilized tumors and mummies. We have found tools called fire drills, which uh, I think means something like a cauterization of a tumor. Sounds awful. And practically, I think most people have known or experienced someone who have gone through cancer. I have lost my father to terminal cancer. And the people who stand behind patients going through such this traumatic and scary time truly are giving the world a deep service. I'm so thankful for those of you who go into this career path because your care and your kindness means everything to a family that's going through this. Oncology pharmacy includes a lot of other fields that are similar and yet sometimes oncology pharmacists are within specialty where they provide specialty care to a variety of different patients. And sometimes it's only oncology. Sometimes they're within cancer centers and they're doing infusion, or sometimes they are just counseling patients and approving medicines. Whatever a pharmacist is doing within oncology, they're being viewed as medication experts. They are the people who are making recommendations to doctors, providers, changing doses, monitoring, making sure that the medicine being delivered is of course happening safely and effectively. Some common practice sites for oncology pharmacists are of course cancer centers, hospitals, healthcare systems, outpatient oncology clinics just dedicated to oncology. But you can also get into palliative care, hospice care, long-term care, Care, as well as even the pharmaceutical industry. Oncology pharmacists cover a wide vast of range of different places to practice. We don't know exactly how many pharmacists are in this field, but we do know that there's approximately 4,300 pharmacists with a board certification in oncology. In addition to that, we also know that there are 85 PGY2s specialized in oncology care. Typical job titles for oncology include oncology pharmacist, clinical oncology pharmacist, and oncology clinical pharmacy specialist. Any combination of those will probably find you a vast array of jobs on Indeed or Glassdoor or any job website. Now let's talk about the salary. So for oncology pharmacist salary ranges, actually I'd like to hear what you think. Is it any different than community, retail, hospital? higher, lower, put in a number that comes to mind off the top of your head. What do you think the average is? All right, what did we find in our research? Well, according to salary.com, they put ranges of 136 to 154 being the majority where people fall into. According to ZipRecruiter, the average is at 132, which is less than the previous range. And of course, we saw lots of highly paying jobs in California. We should always expect California to be paid more because it's more, everything is more expensive in California. One thing to note that I think is bringing down the average on ZipRecruiter is this large swath of people reporting what looks like maybe between 110 and 120. I'm not sure where that's coming from, but that does seem to be bringing down the average. We found a few jobs in oncology pharmacy to see if the starting salaries were in that range, and they, they were. One job in Duluth had a 130K starting to 167 top. And after doing a lot of different clinical pharmacy roles, 
neurology, psych, this average is actually higher than a few others. And so with that, like, it's a big plus to me because what I don't like about these clinical pharmacy career paths in general, it's not the satisfaction, it's not the burnout, it's not the workplaces or the work itself, it's the salary. I think it's a total disservice to our profession that you get PGY1 and 2 training to do this job, not always, but often, and uh, you don't get paid more <laughs> than your uh, community pharmacy brethren who did not do this extra training. It's a bummer. I really hate it. But given that oncology is a little bit higher, I'm gonna give it one of the highest scores for clinical pharmacy career paths of a seven out of 10. And now let's talk about job satisfaction. So are oncology pharmacists fulfilled? Are they enjoying what they do? There isn't a whole lot of research out there on the subject, but we did find one interesting study entitled The Evaluation of Burnout in National Sample of Hematology and Oncology Pharmacists. And I've been there because when I was a practicing clinical pharmacist, I got burned out. And unfortunately, I treated patients often more like problems than people. And it's painful to go through something like that. One of the main concerns that attributes to this burnout is the workplace demands. Oncology is something where you're dealing with usually terminally ill patients. Terminally ill means they're going to pass. And to see patients go through that year over year, day after day, is taxing on a soul. You may think yourself tough, and I, more power to you if you feel like you wanna serve this patient population. If you do, if you end up deciding going this way, I would highly encourage you to really prioritize your mental health. Seek therapy, talk with friends, enjoy the small moments of life. Because watching patient over patient pass away, go away, and sometimes, yes, get cured. A little research on Reddit, and we found some pharmacists sharing a much different story. Many pharmacists attributed their satisfaction to collaborating with other healthcare professionals, problem solving with patients and doctors, and even getting to counsel and educate patients and family. Many pharmacists shared that they get to enjoy the learning process. There's always something new to learn, always something changing with cancer care, and always guidelines are being updated. One pharmacist said that, quote, the day shift hours and the weekends off are great. Another pharmacist shared, the oncologist pharmacist trusts me. They value my opinion. I can't even begin to express the satisfaction I get from my job. I feel useful and valued. I wouldn't find this very unique to oncology pharmacy. I see this happening in a lot of other clinical pharmacy roles, but I think it's important to bring up. We wanted to look at some objective data, and so we like looking at Glassdoor because people who work at these companies review it and Take with a grain of salt that most of these reviews are not from pharmacists, but still it gives you a good snapshot. One review we looked at was the Memorial Sloan Ket Kettering, Kettering? <laughs> Cancer Center, and they had a 4.0 from over 3,000 reviews. If a company gets over a 3.5, that's like an A plus in my book, okay? It's very hard to make 3,000 people that happy, and 80% <sighs> they're doing well. Most people reviewed saying that they do a great job at compensation and diversity and inclusion. However, they doubt it sounds like they're senior management. And honestly, in healthcare, who isn't doing something like that? So for job satisfaction, I'm going to give this a trepid six out of 10 because a lot of people are reporting burnout, actually 60% of people. Um, but on the flip side of that, in the right setting, it sounds like, you can find a great team, great collaboration, respect, value, and most importantly, doing a great job for patients. This sounds like a great place, potentially, for your clinical pharmacy career. Now let's talk about job market demand. So are there tons of jobs available? Well, maybe. It's a decent amount. According to our research, we found that on Indeed, there was around 650 jobs available with roughly 66% of these being entry-level positions. This is actually quite low. When you look up just about any clinical career path, about 80% of them will be considered entry-level positions. The truth is we need also need to look at the disease state itself to understand the job market. Cancer right now is one of the top causes of death in the United States. According to cancer.org, they are projecting over 2 million cases of first-time cancer in 2024. And that number is only expected to increase over time. 
Given these factors, meaning more people are going to get cancer, which means more people need treatment for said cancer. And also given how many pharmaceutical companies are developing cancer medications, I have to believe that the market is only going to continue to grow in demand for pharmacists. In addition to this demand, oncology patients are also very acclimated to getting home infusions for their care, thus demanding telehealth services, thus increasing the likelihood of hybrid and even remote roles in this space. I like that. I like, I like it, it a lot. lot. On top of that, there's also some sign-on bonuses that we found. I'm very happy to report one job we found had a 25K sign-on bonus. Very healthy, very nice. Get yourself a used car with that, or maybe pay off a down payment for a house or a loan. And we found another job too that was at a 10K sign-on bonus. One of the other factors for the job market demand is we like to look at the number of applicants being applied. And on LinkedIn, you can do that. Just perusing here a list of oncology jobs, and you can see here barely a handful apply. You know, one pharmacy client of mine who was honestly looking to get into another cancer center was very unhappy with what she was doing. She was a brand new pharmacist, no residency, just graduated and had been working at a cancer center for over two years. Take that example to hopefully show you that you don't need a residency, a certification to get into this field. You can get an entry level position. And luckily in this pharmacist case, I was able to meet with her once and help her see that all she really needed to do was talk to her manager to get more clinical activities on her workload docket. And now she's really happy, not looking for another job. I'm gonna give the satisfaction score a seven out of 10 because I see that the demand from patients is only gonna get higher. I see specialty and oncology clinics growing. I see a growing number of new medicines that will need to be managed by pharmacists. So I think there's a pretty healthy growth for the next couple of years. And now it's time for the final flexibility factor. This is the magic sauce, okay? This factor is the reason why most pharmacists leave a job or seek a new one. How flexible is it? What are your hours? What's the shift like? How consistent things are? And while there's no like studies or trials to prove any of this, we do know quite a bit of information from job postings and information from cancer websites. We know that most of these positions are eight to five, Monday through Friday, often have weekends off, often get national holidays off. This, this is really nice. It's sad to say that like most pharmacy jobs don't allow for that. So in my opinion, this is fantastic. But can it go remote? Well, not a whole lot of these jobs are remote in our research. We found that quite a few were willing to go hybrid, maybe about honestly 15% of the jobs we looked at were hybrid, which is nice. It's nice to see that we're going in that direction, but it's not universal. But how easy is it to get started in this field? Well, I looked at five jobs on LinkedIn and four out of five of them unfortunately required a residency or certification. Now, in our coach program, we talked to pharmacists specifically about how to position themselves as a top candidate and even better candidates than those with residency training. Obviously, that's really subjective because in some roles, absolutely a residency is required, but not every oncology pharmacist role needs that level of training. And many of them are willing to train pharmacists on the job. Because this is a niche, one downfall of the flexibility factor is that unless you're willing to move, it isn't so easy to get into another job. Usually, even in major metropolitan areas, there's maybe, you know, two, three, four, five employers in the area providing this kind of care. So it's not exactly all that simple of just getting another job. But on the flip side of that, many oncology pharmacists, you know, not only transfer between companies, but they also are welcome to leave. Many go into pharma, academia, research, or just go back to clinical pharmacy in some other sector. So it's not hard to, you know, leave and, and even come back into the profession, in my opinion. I'm gonna give the flexibility score an eight out of 10 because that schedule is mwah. There is some potential for hybrid and remote and it's not hard, I would say, to like weave your way in and out once you're in. 
but it is a little bit difficult to get started unless you go the route of getting a residency. But again, there's still some basic starting roles that you can get into and get on the job training as well. And now for the final score. So let's recap. We found that clinical pharmacy in oncology get a little bit of higher average salary than your typical clinical pharmacist, which gave it a seven out of 10. For job satisfaction, we found quite a bit of burnout, but for those people in the right work environments, they've reported high levels of satisfaction working with team and patients. So we gave it a six out of 10. For job demand, we said seven out of 10 because we only see the demand growing in this field for these roles, although there isn't you know, thousands of jobs by comparison to like hospital or community settings. And then finally for flexibility, we gave it an eight out of 10 because just of how flexible and how great these schedules are, as well as how easy it is for you to like move your way in and out of the profession once you're in it. And so that gives the final score a very healthy seven out of 10. You know, oncology pharmacy has its pros and cons. Yes. I would say it has a pretty healthy job market for pharmacists who love making connections with patients. This can be very difficult. It can be taxing on one's soul, emotions, whatever you want to believe those are to constantly be seeing people suffer from a disease that's outside of their control. It is truly amazing. The age we live in that we have medicine that's able to cure cancer in many cases. I, I don't want to dissuade anyone from going down this path. This is something that I feel like a lot of pharmacists would make a great impact in, but just know the dangers that you walk through in this field. So if you are an oncology pharmacist, what did you think of my scores here? Would you correct me about some of the things I've said? What are your experiences? I would love to hear it in the comments below. Did you think I was too harsh or too soft on some things? I'm curious to know more. Thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in learning more about careers and you want help on your job search, I would encourage you to check out our community. We have a free circle community that you can join and attend workshops every Thursday where we talk about helping you with your resume, helping you network, helping you learn LinkedIn and connecting and having success in the job. I'd love to see you in there because it's a ton of fun and I really get to enjoy helping pharmacists make progress towards careers that matter. Thanks for watching this video and until I see you in the next one, take care.